was this guy, Lone Ranger, based off of this guy? Stay tuned to find out. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Classic Cars and Comics. In this episode, we're going to look at the Lone Ranger and see if he was based upon the legendary lawman Bass Reeves. Now, a few years ago, I was watching a TV show, I believe it was on the American History Channel, and it was based upon like famous lawmen, famous gunslingers from the Wild West. Well, one of the episodes focused primarily on Bass Reeves. Now, I didn't know who Bass Reeves was at this time, but after the video, I was very intrigued by Bass Reeves. So... In this video, we're going to give you a history of Bass Reeves from sort of the beginning of his life all the way up until the end. And then we're going to lead right into the Lone Ranger and the similarities between the two people. Okay, Bass Reeves is probably one of the greatest lawmen who's, who's ever lived. And it's someone that you might not have even heard about. All right, And the fact that the Lone Ranger may be based off of Bass Reeves is even crazier. So we'll look at some facts as we know them. And a lot of this material that I've gathered for this video comes from Art Burton. It comes from like Wikipedia, other websites that I, I, I sourced to be able to get information about the legendary Bass Reeves. So please sit back, enjoy the video. If you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe. Um, if I've messed anything up, hey, post it in the comments, okay? Bass Reeves was born into slavery in July of 1838 in Crawford County, Arkansas. Bass was named after his grandfather, Bass Washington, and his family was enslaved by Arkansas state legislator William Steele Reeves. Around 1846, William Reeves moved to Grayson County, Texas. That's near Sherman and the Peters Colony. Side note about Sherman, Buck Owens and Will Kane from ESPN were born in Sherman, and right next door to Sherman, sort of like their sister city, is Denison. President Dwight David Eisenhower was born there, as well as John Hillerman, Sully Sullenberger, and Doc Holliday even had a dental office there. When the Civil War began, Colonel Reeves joined the Confederate Army and took Bass with him. At some point during the war, Bass gained his freedom and left the company of Colonel Reeves. It's believed that Bass and the Colonel got into a heated argument over a card game, and Bass beat the Colonel to a pulp. At this point, Bass had to get the heck out of Dodge, and he did what most folks did during that time, and he fled to Indian Territory, a.k.a. Oklahoma. Once in Indian Territory, Bass lived amongst the Cherokee, Creeks, and Seminoles. By doing this, Bass was able to learn their language, and when slavery was officially abolished by the 13th Amendment in 1865, Bass was a free man. As a freedman, Reeves packed up and headed to Arkansas near Van Buren. Reeves and his family ran a farm until 1875, when Isaac Parker was appointed federal judge for the Natives' Territory. Isaac Parker later became known as the Hanging Judge of the Old West. During his 21 years as a judge, Judge Parker tried 13,490 cases. Out of those cases, 8,500 people pled guilty or were convicted at trial. That's a 63% conviction rate. The hanging judge also sentenced 160 people to death, and 79 of those souls ended their life at the end of a rope. Parker appointed James F. Fagan as U.S. Marshal and tasked him with hiring 200 deputy marshals. Fagan recruited Bass because Bass knew the lay of the land, and he could also speak several native languages. This made Bass the first black deputy west of the Mississippi River. Reeves was assigned to the Western District of Arkansas, and they had responsibility for all of Indian Territory. Bass served in this position until 1893, which would be around 18 years. Oklahoma was still not a state in 1893, and did not become a state until 14 years later in 1907. Reeves transferred to the Eastern District of Texas, Paris, Texas, and in 1897, he transferred to the Muscogee Federal Court in Indian Territory. Reeves went on to work for 32 years as a federal police officer in Indian Territory and became one of the most valued deputies of Judge Parker. Reeves was known for arresting some of the most dangerous criminals of the time, and somehow, he was never wounded. Although, one time, he had his gun belt and his hat shot off his head. Reeves was a marksman with a rifle and a revolver. Bass had superior detective skills, sort of like a certain character we know, Batman. 
Uh, when Bass retired in 1907, he had arrested over 3,000 felons. That's truly amazing. So he worked roughly 11,680 days, and he accrued 3,000 arrests. That means if he worked seven days a week for 32 years, he would have made arrests on 26% of the days he worked. 26% of the days he worked. That's incredible. Bass killed 14 outlaws to defend his life. Bass also had to arrest his own son for murder. Benny was charged with the murder of his own wife, and Bass insisted that he be the one to bring Benny in. Bass tracked his son down, and Benny ended up spending 11 years at Fort Leavenworth. Once Benny got out, he allegedly lived the rest of his life as a model citizen. At 68 years old, Reeves became an officer of the Muskogee Police Department. He worked until an illness forced him to retire at the age of 70. Reeves passed away on January 12, 1910 of Bright's disease. Just as a side note, Reeves himself was once charged with murdering a posse cook. At the trial, with Judge Parker residing, Bass reported to have shot by mistake while cleaning his firearm. Bass ended up being acquitted. Okay, what I'd like to do for y'all now is just sort of give you an idea of what part of the country we're looking at here. Bass would have originally been born up in this area right here, okay, where my ex is. That's like Fort Smith, Van Buren, it's Crawford County. From there, as a young child, and we'll just sort of mark it in dashes, he would have moved across this area, would have taken numerous hours, and he would have went to the Denison slash Sherman area like we talked about. Peter's Colony is actually over here in the western part of uh, Grayson County from everything I was able to tell. Um, and so he would have been in that area. But Denison Sherman, that's a good landmark for you. From here, he would have went into the Civil War. Now, there is a old Civil War fort up around Durant, which is just north of this area. So it's up here in that area. It's called Fort Washita. There were no major battles or anything fought there, but there's at least a Civil War fort. I don't know where he would have been stationed at. I don't know if he went back east or exactly what happened, but at least we know he went east at some point. Now, we will just track back as if we're coming back from the east because he comes back to Indian Territory. So here we go, jotting across. And I believe he's going to get up here possibly around Oklahoma City. The reason I believe that is because that is where your Cherokees, your Seminoles, and your um, Cherokees, Seminoles, and then what was the other tribe? The Creeks. That's where they were all located, up around Oklahoma City. I mean, heck, we even have Seminole, Oklahoma right here. So that's not far-fetched to believe that he would have been up here in this Indian Territory. But the whole part of Oklahoma here, that is all Indian Territory at that point. Like I said, Oklahoma does not become a state until 1907. That's very, very late. From here, um, he goes back east. Now, this is just the best I can figure from everything that I've had at my disposal. And this is where he meets up with the Hanging Judge. Okay, that's Fort Smith. That's where he operated out of. Now, at some point, you know, he comes back into Indian Territory to do work in Indian Territory, wherever that may be. At some point, he comes all the way down to Paris, Texas. Okay, He works down in Paris, and then I believe he ends his law enforcement career. Let's jot all the way back up here to Muskogee, Oklahoma. Okay, Right up there to Muskogee. That is where he ended his law enforcement career, and I believe he is also buried in the area up there. I could be wrong. I'll double check that here in a second, and show you if I was right or wrong, but that's a whole bunch of dots and dashes and everything else, but that's sort of the path that he took as he traveled doing his law enforcement gig. So um, hopefully that helped give you a better understanding of the part of the country that he was operating in. Bass also has some famous family members. Bass is the great uncle of Paul L. Brady, who became the first black man to be appointed as a federal administrative law judge in 1972, and his great-great-grandson 
is also an NHL hockey player named Ryan Reeves. Historian Art Burton stated that Reeves had to be the inspiration for the character of the Lone Ranger. Burton believed that due to the sheer number of people Reeves arrested without being injured, and the fact that many of those arrested subjects would have been incarcerated in the Detroit House of Correction, the same city where the Lone Ranger radio plays were broadcast on WXYZ, is evidence enough of the connection. George W. Trindle, owner of the radio station, was also a lawyer, and he came up with the idea for the Lone Ranger. So let's look at some of the connections, and you can determine what you think. The Lone Ranger patrolled the same frontier in what appears to be the same time frame as Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves was from, was from Texas, spent some time in Sherman, and the Lone Ranger was from Texas. Research has shown that the name of the fictional Lone Ranger was Reed. Reed is similar to Reeves. Both Bass and the Lone Ranger rode a white horse. Actually, Bass's horse was gray, but it appeared to be white. Both Bass Reeves and the Lone Ranger worked with a Native American sidekick, Grant Johnson for Reeves and Tonto for the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger would have handed out silver bullets, and Bass Reeves, he handed out silver coins. The Lone Ranger wears a black mask to disguise his identity, which could be a possible nod to Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves didn't wear a mask, but experts believe that with him being a black man during this time, that would have allowed him to naturally, you know, disguise himself. No one expected for a black man to be a law enforcement officer at that time, especially since we've already discussed that he was the first black lawman west of the Mississippi River. Tonto was from the Potawatomi Indian tribe, and that tribe was found in Indian territory. When the Lone Ranger first appeared in comics and movies, he had a black mask that covered his whole face. Later on, for television purposes though, that mask was reduced. All right, what do you think? Do you think there's enough there? Is there enough similarities there for you to safely say that there is some doubt, there is some possibility that the Lone Ranger was based upon a black man? What do you think? I know what I think, but I want to see what you think. Post it in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching.